Hi, I'm Vlad Bresnik's. Welcome back to the Bresnik's cast, episode number 33 now. This is going to be a solo Vlad show. Primarily because I wanted to talk about a documentary I watched recently. Uh, it came out in 2016 and it's called Burn the Place You Hide. Um, it's a documentary directed by Richard Knight, he wrote it as well, and it tells the story of Norwegian musician Thomas Hansen, or St. Thomas, um, who I would call kind of like the Norwegian Daniel Johnson, for a lot of reasons that we'll get into. Um, it's a very well shot film, and definitely worth watching, and I just need to say at the start, man, Scandinavian TV in the early 2000s looked bonkers. <laughs> I just had to say that. You'll see when you watch it. But we're going to get any, this isn't going to be like a spoiler sort of thing. This is going to be more about like, you know, looking into who Thomas Hansen was from my amateur perspective, you know. So let's talk about his music first. It was that very kind of lo-fi alternative folk, you know, kind of like he'd said himself he was influenced by Bonnie Prince Billy and Elliot Smith, you know, and I think as well you could say he sounded a bit like sort of Uncle Chupello, but like I said, particularly a lot of similarities with Daniel Johnson, and not just musically in his life as well, but we will get into that too. It's the kind of lo-fi folk music that had like a, a kind of stream of consciousness lyrics at times and things like that, but very, uh, very deep sadness to it, if you know what I mean, you know, just in the way it sounds. If you know that kind of music, if you're thinking of someone like Body Prince Bill, you know what I'm talking about exactly you know so you watch the film and you realize that it seems to be these cycles in his life it seems to be that he makes an album he goes on tour he either has a breakdown on tour or shortly afterwards there's a recovery period he makes a new album he goes on tour there's a breakdown, or you know, and then it goes on and on and on, this kind of way, and that kind of stuff is what's similar to Daniel Johnson, you know, like the, you know, the breakdowns, the erratic behaviour while touring, and then the going home to his parents to, you know, like recover and stuff after it, same way Daniel Johnson did, you know, very similar stuff, um, and now, like I'm not a psychologist or any kind of expert, shockingly. But it's clear, very clear in the film that Thomas has a lot of social anxiety issues. And if you've never dealt with something like social anxiety, it can sound quite trivial and stuff, but it can be incredibly crippling, you know, it can stop you from pursuing careers, you know, it can stop you from having a partner in life and yeah, it can be it can do a lot to a person. You know, there can even be people that you'll know in your life that you just think they're arseholes because of how they act. But in actual fact, because their social anxiety is so deep, um, what they what they find themselves doing is, you know, kind of retreating into themselves and sometimes even being like, you know, other people are, are all arseholes or, you know, like, or they just seem like they're being rude, but they're not. It's just that they're so uncomfortable with other people, you know, and it's not something you can... You can do things to help it, but it's not something you can just control, you know, like that. You know, so this is like, this is a big thing, obviously, in his life. And I've worked with a lot of alcoholics in my time. And so many of them have told me that when they were young, they suffered from terrible anxiety. They didn't feel right around other people, you know, they didn't feel like they were normal. And then inevitably someone puts a drink in their hand and then they're like, you know, this I found the magic potion, now my inhibitions are lowered, I feel better, I don't feel so self-conscious, I don't feel so shitty about myself, I feel like I can talk to people, you know, and some people find that with drugs as well. But obviously, I mean, where does that lead? Where that leads is you start needing to get more and more and then you start telling yourself that you know what like I can't do these normal things that other people can do without drink or drugs you know or sometimes both um so you start telling yourself that and then your problems get worse and worse and then we all know what happens when drug and alcohol problems 
reach certain levels, you know, you're lucky if you don't die <laughs> a lot of the time. So people think that like getting fired rendered in a hospital is bad, but if you don't die, then you're lucky. Totally. But I mean this this is shown in the film, you know, it's one of Thomas's later tours. And he's been off, like, the drinking stuff, and at the start of it, you know, like, he's sober and that kind of thing, but then you can see that the stress just, it just gets too much for him, and, you know, he falls back into his old habits again, you know, and he was described as, like, shy and stuff, like, by people when he was younger, Thomas, obviously I'm talking about, and it's interesting um, in the film to watch him on stage because he's like, a lot of the time he's really relaxed and, you know, telling jokes and sometimes even telling the audience off. But I think, again, in my amateur opinion, I'm just some dude on the internet, but I think this is almost like something he never had before, a power he never had before with people, you know, because he was always like the shy sort of guy. But now he's in the club and all these people have shown up to see him and he's the main attraction and, you know, now he's got this power that he never had before. And that's quite interesting as well, you know. Um, it was like, this was a power he could never have socially in real life. And another thing that this kind of makes me think of is that Many alcoholics and drug addicts have told me that when you know, obviously these problems start at a young age and they say that it stunts your mental growth, you know, not in a way that it makes you stupid or something like that, but in a way that you don't kind of mature the way that other people do. You kind of get stuck in a state, you know, because a lot of people when they're younger, when they're in their teens and all that, you know, they go through the, some of these periods in college or whatever where, you know, they drink and they experiment with drugs and all that, but then they grow out of it and they become, like, normal functional members of society. But then you get these people that they don't, they can't, and obviously some people get into, like, alcoholism and that later on in life, but particularly you know, if it starts young in you, then it does seem to stunt you in a way. And I've noticed that from people I've worked with also. And, I mean, with Thomas, this was even to the point that one of his drummers um, talks in the film about how they were on tour together and uh, they were staying in a hotel, obviously, and Thomas insisted they slept with the light on because he was scared of the dark. You know, and a grown man and... I don't know if he was sober or drunk at this point, but, I mean, some people, like, who can't sleep, again, prescription drugs and alcohol, like he, he took, you know, they would take them to get asleep, and a lot of the times, particularly with alcohol, it'll put you to sleep initially, but it'll, it'll interrupt your sleep and you won't have proper sleep, but you, it's just anything to get you to sleep, I suppose. You know, and obviously, like, I didn't know Thomas or anything like that, and I'm just sort of throwing a lot of theories out there. But yeah, these were my impressions, you know, when I watched the film. You know, and I got a lot of these kind of very strongly. And I mean, even talking about like the childlike thing, you know, Thomas was missing, you know, and he was found on the 10th of September 2007, dead in a house, and the lights were still on, you know, so even right up to the end. And the, the cause of, deter of death was determined to be an unfortunate combination of prescribed drugs. And it's a really sad story. It is um, because he is one of the people that was really, you know, it's like, it's not the kind of th th music I would listen to a lot, but I really do appreciate just that straight honesty, you know, it's, just, it's something that if you went on like the X Factor or American Idol or something, people would be like, you've got no chance in music. But it's like to people who it really connects with, it really connects with, you know, it's one of those, he was one of those kind of artists, you know. 
and Burn the Place You Hide, obviously the name of the film, one of Thomas's lyrics, and very, very poignant as well, because this is the thing some creative people have to deal with. The fact that they're very sensitive, socially anxiety, you know, like prone, not all of them, but, you know, a lot of them to different degrees. And then they have this undeniable drive, this something they can't help it, and in them they have to put stuff out there, you know, they've got all this art, all this creativity, and I mean, who doesn't want to create, because, my, I mean, this is just a wee pet theory of mine, but my theory is everyone wants to create, whether it's children, or art, or, you know, like, businesses, or whatever it is, gardens, you know, because creation is what God does. And everyone wants to emulate what God does, you know, but that's just a wee kind of, just a quick aside that I, I was thinking of. But yeah, no, that's the thing. So you're ang you're anxious, you're, you're not a fan of like putting yourself out there, but you've got this in you where you can't not do it. You know, it's like someone said to me one time, if you want to write a book, you probably won't. If you have to write a book, you will write a book. And I think it's the same thing. I think Thomas Hansen had to make music. Had to make music, whatever. Like, I think he had to do it, you know, and he was, you know, he was burning the place he had because introverted, anxious people, they're not all not all artistically inclined, you know what I mean? Some of them are quite happy to keep to themselves and all the rest of it. But he was one of those guys that he did, he really did burn the place that he would hide, you know, in his own mind, or in his own room, wherever, you know, just away from everyone else. But he shared the contents of his mind and his soul, if you want to put it that way. You know, he he was out there, you know, he put himself out there in a, and his music was very kind of fragile and vulnerable. So he put, him out, he put himself out there in a very vulnerable way. And, you know, that's not something that's easy for anyone to do, and especially someone that has these issues, you know, and he did give himself nowhere to hide, you know, really. And I've wondered for some time, I've loved a lot of musicians, like, and not only I like their music, but I've been fascinated by them as people, you know, like, of, a lot of the time because they seemed a bit kind of strange, you know, I'm just thinking of people like Sid Barrett and stuff like that, you know, uh, Nick Drake, and you wonder if these people, you wonder if like, I think I would like their music anyway, but do they get more recognition because, Daniel Johnson, you could put in this as well, because, do they get more recognition because of the fact that they're you know, strange, you know, like, and to the normie, you know, they're, they're weird people, you know, and does that make them more interesting, or is that just a feature of being an artist, I mean, who knows, that's an open question, but I kind of think we've done enough on this, you know, I wanted to talk about it because I really like this, this was something when I watched this film, and I encourage you to watch it, it's on Amazon Prime, the film was called Burn the Place You Hide, um, and I'll put links to it in the show notes, but like, yeah, I really wanted to talk about it because just, I just, I just think I resonated a lot of ways with like, you know, the anxiety and stuff like that, and yeah, I found it just to be a fascinating movie. So, there will be a proper show coming out in a day or two, <laughs> don't worry, um, but I'm going to do, a, I'm going to do some more of these, you know, I'm still mainly doing the interviews, you know, got a lot of great people coming up, you know, David Shepke will be coming up soon from uh, Blank Radio, like, if and if you don't know what that is, you will find out and you will like it, you know, um, I've got a lot of, lot of good people I'm having on, an old friend of mine, James Burnett from Survival Punk, that's going to be a really good show as well, Klaus Morlock's returning, so there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming, but every now and then I'm going to do these kind of wee shorter ones, um, because I kind of like doing them, you know, gets my thoughts out there sort of thing and, you know, a bit of YouTube content and, you know, they're maybe not as long as a lot of the other shows. So thank you for listening. The website, bresnix.com, B-R-E-S-N-I-X.com. 
I should say thank you for watching also. Um, follow me on Twitter at Vladimir Bresnix. Um, so thank you so much. So I'm going to leave you with a little bit of St. Thomas on the podcast. And I won't do it on YouTube, but you know, go and listen to it. You'll like it. <laughs> Thanks for listening and you'll hear me again very soon.